Right, so up to this point, we have been examining the difference between Quanfa of Chinese martial arts and Shui Jiao Chinese wrestling through a cultural and social differentiation. Well, that is the main difference between the, the two systems, we shall call it that. There are also some technical difference. Now, before we go into that, I'd like to clarify that again, this video is not about which one is good, which one is bad, which one is better. It's not about a comparison of better or worse, but purely a study of how these two systems were originally developed independent of each other and therefore are not part of the same overall system. And again, right, like a lot of things in life, almost everything in life, uh, nothing is absolute. There is no you know, a, a defining line and this side is Chinese martial arts and this side is Chinese wrestling. Right? There are always going to be um, Areas where the, the two merges, um, you know, like parts where something in Shui Jiao you see in, in Quanfa and some stuff in Quanfa maybe you see in, in Shui Jiao. So there's always going to be part where the two blend. So nothing is like a clear cut. However, if you look at it from a general and overall perspective, you will still see some fundamental differences in the approach and its technical aspects. And so this is what we're going to you know, examine now. And another thing I have to clarify is that, of course, there are different disciplines of Chinese wrestling. For example, there's like the Beijing version, there's a Tianjin version, the Baoding version, that some people even claim to have like a, a Shanxi version, etc. etc. And if we're going to look at each of those individually, that's going to take forever. So we're just going to generalize uh, to, to, you know, to examine the overall differences and similarities in the approach. So this is not going to be true for every discipline of, of wrestling and every discipline of Changsa. Okay, so but in, but it will be more or less accurate in a generalized perspective. So the first big difference between uh, Shui Jiao and Changfa is that in Shui Jiao they're very big on hand position or what they call holds, right? In Chinese Shui Jiao there's actually a famous saying called Shu Jiao Bu Shu Ba. What this saying means is it's okay to lose a throw or to lose an engagement or to lose a bout. Right? Shu jiao means you know you getting thrown instead of you throwing the other guy. But bu shu ba means but you should not make a mistake on your hold. So that just shows you that in Chinese wrestling, where you hold is very important. You can't you know make a mistake in your hold, even though it's okay to be thrown, but you know you should not be thrown because you made the wrong hold. It's almost like the Chinese version of what the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu people call. Uh, position before submission, right? Obviously, on the ground, position is most important. When standing up, that position is at least 30% about hold. So, for example, in Chinese wrestling, you have like, like xiao xiao xiu, the short, uh, small sleeve. Obviously, you know, you usually need to have like a, a wrestling jacket to, to yank on, and we don't have them. But so there's like xiao xiu and there's like xiao li, where they have like the, you know, the Chinese. Uh, the old traditional clothes where you can hold here. There's da li, right, from the back here. And there's also a hold on the waist, along with other holds. And one of the, the basic training in Shui Jiao is to basically, for example, if he holds mine and I hold him, right, is to, you know, is to practice to, to yank free. And then, you know, then he will try to yank free. And so you kill just keep yanking free from the hold. And the other places where if he's holding here, you know, I will try to to, to, to take that away and to you know hold him back. So there's a lot of fighting fighting for a better hold. Obviously he doesn't do Chinese wrestling, so he can't really show this in a professional manner. But if you actually seen Chinese wrestling, if you've done Chinese wrestling, you should know this that they fight over holds. And only when someone is superior in a holding position, you know, will they be able to throw the other guy. You know, if he's holding me and I break his hold and, and, and I got a better hold, there's a better chance of me throwing him. Now this is a very big thing in Chinese wrestling, but in Quan Fa, right, the traditional Chinese martial arts side, we almost never hold people's clothes. At least I don't know of any style that is particularly fun of holding people's clothes. There are times where you hold somebody's arm. Maybe you 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 know you hold somebody's elbow. So these are the are the areas where you know the the, the borderline is blurred. But but in Chinese martial arts, Quan Fa side, you don't hold these closing positions. 
and you don't basically fight for these holes. So that's the first big difference, right? It's the holes. And the second difference is positioning of the body, right? In Chinese wrestling, obviously, um, they prefer to have a light stomp, meaning they don't want to root them themselves, right? Unlike traditional martial arts, I've done an episode on the side stomps already, where they prefer to have a more solid stomp. Which is one of the main reasons why, even after Chinese traditional martial arts no longer worrying about horse riding, they still, a lot, majority of the older styles still practice a horse stunt. And if you ask them, you know, why do horse stunt? You don't punch people like this. They, most of the styles they will tell you is to train rooting. So you want to be solid on the ground, right? In Chinese we call it 落地生根. If you land on the ground, you must grow root. And then, which means that you know it should be impossible for the other guy to, to push you over or to break your balance. So the Chinese martial in general, not all of them, but in general, most of them are very big on having solid root. Whereas Chinese wrestling is the exact opposite. They don't want to have solid root. Instead, they want to move around. And you know, a, a lot of the wrestlers that I've spoken to, they will tell you that, you know, besides getting the right hold, one of the most important thing is to move the opponent and put yourself in a superior position. So if, he, so if he's, again, you're not do wrestling, so this is what, not what look as professional, but let's say you stand like this, right? Like with you, and we are grabbing our, our onto e, 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 each other. Um, if I try to throw him like this, it's obviously hard, because he, he's you know, well balanced. So a lot of time, what they will do is they will try to, to move each other and then do a, do a throw. So while the guy's moving, then you, you, you cut into the right position and then catch him what in motion and throw. And obviously this has a very profound physics behind it, right? It's harder to move something when they're standing still than if you try to if you're really moving something to throw it over. Yeah, Iner yeah, inertia. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, it's, you just rely on the momentum. Yeah, if an object, no matter how heavy it is, if it's in motion, it's a lot easier to then you know affect its motion than if something is standing still. We have to deal with the inertia. So over here I'm going to include some video clips of you know actual Chinese wrestling practitioners doing this kind of moving around. So in comparison, you know, traditional, traditional Chinese martial arts, at least the older version, the, the ones that were developed in the early Qing dynasty, right, not the ones that got revolutionized towards the Republic era, the early versions, they don't like to move that much. Rather, they want to stay grounded. I mean, they move forward and back, but most of the time they stay grounded and they will punch or do whatever strike. So in comparison, that's also a big difference. And the funny thing here is, again, this isn't to say which style is better, which style is worse, but it's actually, you know, if you take a pure Chinese wrestler mentality versus the old school Chinese martial art, it's actually hard for the wrestler to do this stuff. It's much harder to move someone when he's in a very solid stance than someone who's actually standing up here. No thing is impossible, but it's just harder. And it's even harder if the guy isn't wearing a durable clothes that you can yank on. Right, if I don't have clothes, or if I, you know, if I wear like like soak fabric, you know, the moment you pull it, it's probably gonna tear. And yes, it becomes harder. Not impossible, but harder. From here, you can see that the two systems have a different understanding to how to deal with throw. And you know, the thing about Chinese wrestling that it became more useful when the overall environment moved into Sanda, because Sanda basically adopted the Western kickboxing approach where they have a higher stance for mobility and they have you know so that they can throw both hand in punches and doing kicks and in this case Chinese wrestling became more efficient because it's much easier to throw somebody standing like this and moving around than to throw somebody who's in a whole stance. And you can see this also in the development of MMA. Right? Originally in, in the early Balachido and even the, the, the first UFC, the lot of fighters so good to the ring fighting like in Muay Thai stance or in kickboxing stance because they're not yet accustomed or adapted to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to, to take downs. But if you look in nowadays, majority of the fighters adopted a much wider stance so that it's much harder to dive in and you know, to shoot in and do double leg, single leg, all these kind of takedown. So it's almost like you know, paper, rock, scissor kind of scenario where the traditional pure Chinese wrestling 
don't actually have a hard time dealing with old school Chinese martial art where they have a, a lower horse stabilized stance. But the Chinese martial art, the old ones, they have a problem dealing with the modern combat sport like Sanda because they are too slow to adapt to something moving around and attacking you from different angles. Whereas you know, people in the modern combat sports, they become an easier target for Chinese wrestling to throw because they have a narrow stance and they're moving around. And again, like I said in the beginning, this isn't about which one's better, which one's worse, just to let you see that Quan Fa, the Chinese mo traditional martial art and wrestling, they are developed with different mentality and different belief system in mind. So they are not, well, I mean, of course you can merge the, the two, like a lot of people who did during the Republic era and, and forward. But you can see that originally those two are not the same, right? They're not developed with the same kind of concept. The one was rooting solid horse downs and then punch people, while the other one has a more mobile stun where they can spin the people around, and while he's spinning me around, and we try to find opportunities to throw each other. Well, that's the second difference. And the third one will get to the technical aspect of what is strike. Right? In the last video, I've talked about strike, although in, in, in English you call throw, right? in, in wrestling you say you throw someone. But in Chinese, there are actually a lot of different um, different words to describe different kinds of throw. If I take an object in my hand, right, I mean, I wonder if you know, know that, right? If I throw something like this, it's called zhi. And if I throw something like this, it's called tou. If I throw something like this, it's called pao. If I throw something like this, it's called diu. So you can see that there are so many different words to describe a different action. You, I'm, always, I'm always throwing something, but by the different hand gesture, there's a completely different word for it. Right? I mean, you also know, know this, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually quite complicated to, to, to pick which one. Yeah, basically. It's, it's, uh, it's depending on uh, you know, your body motion, basically. Yes. And you know, your angle, and etc. etc. You know, this English has like, you know, like throwing a ninja star, right? This, this vertical and horizontal. But, but it's know, all it's, throw. Yes, it's, it's all throw, yeah. And, but in Chinese, right? Uh, well, in Japanese, I think as well. You know this overhead throw, and you know even the dagger experts. Right? I was actually checking a, a YouTube video. The, when they throw daggers, they distinguish different different angle of exit. So in English or in Japanese? in English as well. Yeah. So uh, I, I I haven't watched the entire video, but you know for throwing daggers, there's difference between this kind of throw, that kind of throw. You know, um, so uh, diagonal. Why are you looking at throwing daggers? Aren't you uh, too old to dress up like a ninja? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, well, you know, funny enough, they. <laughs> uh, I was actually checking out circus. You trying to do the circus? No, no, no. Well, no, no. But uh, you, you know, uh, I, I won't go into details, right? Because I, I, I don't think YouTube will, will allow me if I do go into details while I'm checking out circus things. Needless to say, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in in circus, one of the acts is from daggers. Okay, yeah. So and yeah and and that's that's where I came across the video that like you know there's different ways of throwing daggers from different angles as well. So yeah, so English words doesn't distinguish the difference in general. There's certain discipline they do, but they also they all use the word throw. So you know if you're English speaking in Chinese, right? At least I know that throw in simple English word in Chinese has different things. So, yeah, so shui actually refers to throwing something down. You only call something a shui if you're doing it like this. You know, it, this is not shui, although it's throwing, but this is not shui. So that's why another preferred uh, you know, word I tend to use is smash. Yeah. But then again, smash is not accurate either, because if I take a baseball bat and smash somebody's car, that's not shui. That's called za. Yeah. But if you, if you take something and you smash it to the ground, that's called shui. So based on the, the specific language that we use in Chinese, you can see that when it says shui, originally it refers to picking something up or a person and then throwing him on the ground. Now of course, you know, uh, you know in wrestling, uh, no matter what discipline, strictly speaking, you're not picking something up and, uh, and smashing, you're actually ro rotating a person you know, around his cent center mass. So, you know, so that way you save energy and, and, and strength. You know, I mean, it's, it's a lot more wasteful if you pick something up and then throw him than if I just hold him and, 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 and you know, ro rotate him around his center mass. But, you know, in the old days where people don't understand center mass and all these, you know, physics understanding, they basically distinguished it as shui, you pick something up and you throw him down. A basic example of, of this, you know, um, again, you know, I'm not, 
I've done Chinese real estate in the past, but not very well, so I'm very new at it. It's just to give you an idea. You know, the best example is I, you know, I'm holding my own Xiao 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 Xiao. And I come across here, and it will be, I'm going to do it slow here, because obviously this is the grid floor. And you want to yank the guy up here, right? You go down enough, you yank him up, and then you, you chuck him to the ground. That's a very good example of essentially picking the person up and then slamming him to the ground. And that would be the most classical example of, of strike. And of course, um, you know, not all shui uh, jiao or Chinese wrestling technique are like this. But originally, if you're talking about the actual meaning of the character shui, this is what they are referring to. And there are, you know, at least a handful, if not more, techniques in Chinese shui jiao where you do something similar to that. Um, so that is the fundamental definition of shui. Now if you look at uh, Chinese martial art, right, the Quan Fa, traditional Chinese martial art, the first method, they also have the term shui. But in today's world, shui is no longer a specific term. Pretty much anything that causes a person to fall, they tend to classify that as shui. But originally, like I said in my previous video, there's two differentiations. There's shui and there's die. And those two techniques are not the same. But unfortunately, toward the, the more modern era, where they redefine Chinese martial art as ti da shui na, right, kicking, striking, throwing, and joint locking, they didn't include di. So as a result, majority of Chinese systems they just you know they just for, for forget about the classification of di because it's not part of the official definition, and everything just became shui. But before that, there's actually a difference between shui and di, and now we're going to look at the, the, the difference here. So like I said previously, uh, there is definitely blending between Shui Jiao and Chinese traditional martial art. A good example of this you can see in, in Mantis, you know, there's one particular uh, combo that comes directly out of um, uh, Tai Chi Pang Fa Mantis form called Go Fa, where the guy punches his double sitting hand, and you load this hand, come here, you go into a, an elbow technique, but again this is actually not, it's called, not actually Qin Na, because I'm not actually like, holding it's a strike. And this try to get him a response. I mean, naturally, if I'm gonna go upwards, the guy's gonna don't want his arm out to get damaged, so he will come downwards. And as he comes downwards, I follow the through with an eye, eye poke. And this is to basically get his attention. Obviously, if I blind him, it's good. But if I don't, just get him enough attention so I can come through and, and, and yank him that way. And as you can see, this is a classical technique of strike because I'm rotating him around his center mass, he's gonna smash his head on the ground. So this is a classical case of shui, right? In the actual form, uh, just to show that I didn't just make this technique up, it looks like this. It's here, there, there, and there. And I'm going on to the next te 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 technique. So, so this particular thing is basically a very classical and textbook definition of shui in Chinese martial arts. And you can see a very similar technique in Ba Gua called the Zhou Ma Huo Xie, right? Meaning Passing the horse and catching the person alive. So the name comes from the old days during cavalry war, war period, where people almost like Western jousting, and as they pass each other with spear, um, you know they actually try to grab the guy, like you know we were riding past with a spear, and as they pass, you try to actually grab the guy, pull him off the horse, right? Doma horse and you can see that in Bagua, where they go from from the this motion to the end culture here. And then from there, this is in Chen Chen style Bagua. And then they'll come back into the, the, the Bagua pose. So from here, there. So, so that is pretty much the same as in Mantis form that I just shown. This is pretty much the same technique. It's when you go, you know, you can basically in Bagua there's a different version of how this is done, but pretty much you can start off by doing here and you come through and then you yank him and then you Threw him back with backwards. And why does Bagua have this? Okay, quite simply, the founder of Chinese style Bagua, Cheng Ting Hua, he was a Chinese wrestler before he met Dong Hai Chuan and learned Bagua. So naturally, in his version of Bagua, there are a lot of you know these Chinese shui jiao techniques that got blended into the, 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 the style. So this is a classic example of actual shui in Chinese martial art. But notice something that you know when it comes to Chinese martial art. Even these ones that are very similar to Chinese wrestling, they don't grab onto the claws. They simply do a 
Chinese martial arts moves, or a few like in Nantes' case, and they just go down, grab the waist, and yank the, the, the person. They don't worry about the correct hold. Now another example, uh, that's, you know, we're looking at stuff that are similar to Chinese wrestling here, right? Uh, in Mantis, there's something that looks like this. Uh, this is, again, very similar to a Chinese wrestling technique called um, jiao biezi. So in Chinese wrestling, again, I don't do it, so this is just a rough uh, approximate. Uh, basically, you can hold the guys here, and then you try to yank him back that way, and when he responds by coming back, then you come through here, and then you basically kick him all over, right? So you do it mostly from hold. I mean, I have seen Chinese wrestlers also do it not from holding the, the wrestling jacket, but the most basic way to do it from holding the wrestling jacket. Whereas in Mantis, the way you use this is again to set up a combo, so be here, and then once that comes here, you want to pull here, you control the elbow, and then you put the foot here, and then you yank him that, that, that way. So this is very similar. And you can clearly see that most likely Mantis got this idea from Chinese wrestling at some point. But like I said, especially towards the end of the Qing Dynasty to Republic era, a lot of the Chinese wrestling got merging into the technique and approach got merged into Chinese martial arts, Quan Fa. But obviously you can see that you know, in Mantis, they don't do it from holding someone's jacket, and they have to do it from set up. You don't just come up to a guy and then try to do this to him. You know, you, you blend it into a combo because at its core, Quan Fa is about striking. Even if I want to throw someone, I do it from striking. I don't just come up and then, and then try to do an arm drag and then just do the straight. But right? I try to blend it in from other striking techniques. There's another similarity between Mantis and, and, and Shui Jiao, you can observe like this. Right? There's a throw in, in Shui Jiao where again, uh, holding onto his clothes, and during our you know, struggling, yanking, or whatever you want to call it, if I find the right opportunity, I'm going to come through and then do, do that. And out here, I'm going to then throw him back, right? It's a very classical Chinese wrestling move. You can see a very similar thing in Mantis. In, in the form, it looks like this. But even though the mechanic is very similar, you can see, again see that the approach is very different. The way it uses in Mantis is when he does a punch, I want to do this, and then this one goes for the eyes, and once he blocks this eye, then depending on the hand position, if it's this way, what I'm going to do is to take over the leg, and then from here to an elbow to the head, and that he in turn, after the striking to the head, he will be tripped down into the ground. Whereas if it's, uh, if it's that hand, it will be here, again for the eyes, and then from here, it will be uh, an elbow back this way, that can slow him down. So in the form, it will either look like this, or it will look like this. So again, this is a very similar thing to Chinese wrestling, and probably it was influenced by Chinese wrestling. But you can see that from the approach, it's still fundamentally different, in the sense that I'm not grabbing onto anything, I'm trying to set this up from actual striking technique. And of course, for from here, I only do it if it's allowed. If I don't, I come back and do other methods take techniques. And you can see a similar throw in Baji, right? In Baji, it looks like this. So it's like, you know, do a move here, there, and, and there. But again, in Baji, they don't actually, at least the Baji that I've learned, they don't actually use it in, in, in this way. And instead, it's used more like here and there. And you can see that it does, even though it's the same te te technique, they stop keeping the distance, so to speak. Right? If I'm doing Chinese wrestling, I actually want to be right here so that when this comes over, I'm going to hook this leg up and throw him all the way over. He will flip on the ground. But in Baji, it's more like a sweeping motion where I'm here, but I'm only going to do that when I'm yanking the arm so that he, he trips over. I'm not trying to get all the way in here to throw him all over. So even with the same mechanics, so to speak, the same motion, you know, the way they apply it is different, right? In Baji, they're still having the mentality of striking, 
rather than going into a, a complete wrestling kind of mentality. So you can see that even though they're probably influenced by Shui Jiao and having the same basic motion, the way they chose to apply it is different. And why does some Baji do it the other way around? I mean, that there are probably some styles of Baji or lineage that does the other way around, meaning that, you know, instead of going this way, you know, they'll probably go this way. The problem to why, at least the learning that I've learned, people don't do that, is because you're very vulnerable when you are here to when you are there. In this moment, you are actually open to striking, and there's a slip moment where you are un unbalanced, where someone can actually tip you over. In Chinese wrestling, the way uh, you know they extend it to me, this is mitigated, firstly, by the fact that you hold onto somebody's jacket, and secondly, so that you know, and you're not allowed to strike, of course. You know, in most Chinese wrestling, I know that you know, in Baoding, there's like you know, the the system where they teach you to strike. But in any wrestling match, no matter where you go, whether it's Baoding or, or Beijing or Tianjin, you can't come up and strike somebody. So they're firstly safe from that, and secondly, from here they will actually pick up the leg like this, and then from this, then they go into that throw. But that's not really possible when you are in the in a, in a Quanfa contest, because of the way he can strike, so you kind of have to just go in and do that, and therefore it is not preferred, which is why in the system of body that I've learned before, you come this way and you do it. From all these subtle, subtle differences, you can see that even though they are influencing each other, but when a technique you know, was taken from Shui Jiao into Chinese Quanfa, they still have to be, to be modified to kind of fit you know, the, 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 the world that Quanfa is in, which is basically a world where people are allowed to strike, and people often have solid whole stops. Another example uh, we can look at is um, what they call Dao Ba Triangle, right? inversely pulling out a tree. So this thing you know, in the side 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 stop, uh, that, that way, so it's easier for the audience to see. So Dao Ba Triangle, basically, there are different ways to get in, into it. Um, one of the ways that I was told Basically, you have your hand here. I have my hand here. So you so you engage the guy guy's hand, almost making like you know, make him have his attention here. And then you suddenly turn around, and then you grab the leg, and then you you yank him that way. You pull the leg, you apply the front body to the person is that way. That's another example in Chinese Quanfa of what really would consider as a, as a shui fa, right? A, a throwing, a smashing, a throwing down t -t technique. You hold the guy's leg and you yank him that way. Another example I gave you is from Sha Shao Bei, right? There's a style that I used to practice many years ago. Again, from, from a side stance, you can see that it comes over here, and then after it comes over here, you, you tap him that way first, and as you respond, then you tap him that way, and you, and you throw him over. That will be another example of strike. So these there's a lot more, which we're not going to go through due to time, but these are pretty much how Shui Fa works in Chinese traditional martial art. And you can see that even some of these ideas, you know, or they work on the same idea as, as wrestling, but the big difference is they don't hold up to the, the, to the jacket. And another thing is, you know, a lot of these, they work against us from a side stance, which is not what Chinese wrestling do, because when you, when you wrestle, you don't stand on the side stance, it's usually here. And then, then depending on, on the foot position, you know, try to come this, this way, come that way, you know, try, to, try to do that. So that's why, and from here you can see that the two works on a very different system. They're not designed to, to combat against each other, right? The, the wrestlers people throughout history has been wrestling against wrestlers. And the Chinese Chanda people has, throughout history has been trained to fight against themselves. That's why you can see the two systems work on very different expectations on what the opponent is doing and how you overcome his, de his defense. Next, let's look at what used to be considered as deer fa. Right? Well, as I said, there are shui fa, throwing down or smashing technique, and there are deer fa. So deer is a very hard word to translate. The one that I used previously is tripping. But like I said, um, tripping is not the exact correct word, because um, you know, if, I, if he's walking and I put a stick in and I trip him, that's not called deer, it's called bat. Okay, um, and if I, you know, if I try to, to sweep his leg, it's also called ban. If I try to sweep his leg like in martial arts, it's called sa. So again, you know, in Chinese, there are very specific characters for very specific action. 
So what dia is, if we look at the word itself, on the left there is a character called foot. Okay, that's your foot. On the right is shi. Shi means to lose or to not have. So when we add the two together, it means lose your footing. So what dia originally means in the language is when you're walking and you lose your footing, you must step or you trip over your own foot. That's called dia. If you're walking and there's a banana peel and you slip, that's called shui. So even from here, you can see that shui is a more severe fall. Like when you literally trip and fall on your ass, that's shui. Whereas if you walk, you walk, you walk, and then you, you, know, you miss step or you stumble upon your own footing, that's called dia. I mean, do you differentiate the two in, in Hong Kong? Uh, yes, yeah. Well, you know, it's... Um, like shui dao and dia dao. Yes, yeah. It's, um, it, um, it's basically, you know, how, how I see it, it's shui. Um, well, we call it su in Cantonese. Um, it's, um, su is, it, it's more of a elaborate effort. Okay. It, it involves more from the guy who initiated the action. Okay. You know, where's di, right? Di. Uh, I think in Cantonese it means di. It's, it's falling over. So right. yeah. it's almost like tap a person or tap an object and it falls over. So you don't hold onto your object and you smash it down. Yeah. That's, that's not falling. This one, right, the, the, the word falling in Cantonese called D. It's you tip it over and it falls on its own. Yeah. So yeah. that that that's that's the distinguish between yeah, that that's is pretty accurate too. That that's how it, the difference between the two. So what has been coupled originally considered as DF is now Shri I'm gonna give you a few examples. Keep in mind that this example isn't really very practical right now. I mean I don't think a lot of these are, are practical a a a anymore. But uh, these are what people used to consider as dear fun. The first one I'm going to show you is something that I learned long ago from Xu Shui Xi Lao 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 Shi. He's like a, uh, a Chen Sao Taiji and Bagua uh, master in Beijing. Um, he, one of the most famous things he did was taught uh, black dollars from uh, America. So when I was training with him, you know, he was very big on, on, on dear fun. So one of the things that he taught as dear fun is basically you know, some punches. You basically grab his hand, which I don't believe anymore. If you can find my videos. I don't think you can actually grab some of these punch when they punch. But this is to show you the, the technique. And he will basically be turned and yank a person down this way and causing him to fall. So that to him is called dear fun. And it's not shy fun. And you can see why, because I'm not actually picking him up. I'm not flipping him over his own center mass. He's not smashing to the ground. He's just basically tripping over. Right? Um, yep. You see the different differences and that's right. So this will be classified as DFA. Another one would be, you know, we can take a look at Mantis, right? So again, he's doing a punch, it will be here, a hit here that he blocked, the in was uppercut, or the in was backhand, and all of these are there to, to confuse him, and then it will be here. And that will be another example of DFA. Again, I'm just kidding today, so he trips down. I'm not. I'm not even involved in his center mass. I'm not coming here to grab this. I'm not grabbing it this way. I'm actually quite distant from, from, from him. I'm, I'm doing it only in striking range. Now that tradition is also considered as DFA. You can see the reason these are older than strifa is because, you know, Chuanfa coming from a striking orientated martial art is more comfortable dealing people in the striking range. I mean, obviously, it isn't true anymore. Like the internal, the rise of the internal styles, they actually want to get really close to a guy to strike him really hard. But originally, they actually want to maintain a more striking range. So it's much more comfortable for me to try to disable his balance here than to come all the way in, because that becomes a different game, which they, I don't believe they've had that originally. It's something that came up later on once you know, Chen Fa start to learn stuff from Shui Xiao and vice versa. Another example of from DFA. Another one from Mantis. I mean, obviously, Mantis today they don't call it DFA. Like that, that term is, is not there. I'm not sure if they ever had it, uh, but based on the definition of DFA, these should fall under DFA. But in today's world, everything falls under Shri Shri Fa. Another one in Mantis is called the Yao Zhan, which is um, again something that you, you, you set up with, with this. And from here, you grab the arm. See, you, you lock his step and you push here. 
and then keep falling down. Again, you know, I'm not really picking him up, I'm not smashing him, I'm just causing him to trip over my leg and therefore falling down. So that strategy would also be considered as deer farm. So another example from another style, um, or what they consider as deer farm would be something like if you throw the that hand, he'll be here, he will hit, and as he draws, he'll come down, and he'll try to press here and, and pull there, and, and causing the guy to, to fall. So from all the examples, you can basically see that you don't want to deal with his actual weight. You don't want to get too close to him so you can actually pull him up or rotate on his own center mass. You're basically affecting his balance from a slightly more distant position. And almost like all of them are down in a striking range. And then, you know, uh, obviously, Yao Jia, you come quite, quite close. But still, you know, it's not close like this, right? Where it's like the resting range. It's still kind of relatively there's still some d d d distance here where I can now apply. And if, if this fails, I'm still in striking range. Whereas you know, if I come here and I fail, uh, you know, you're no longer in striking range, it becomes a, a resting game. And around this, you can see that a lot of these stuff that you should usually consider as DFI in Chinese martial arts, they don't go into the resting range per se. And obviously, this isn't 100%, just like you know, in Chinese wrestling, they don't all wrestle at this range, they also have wrestling at this range and manipulation from here, so it's not like a clear cut thing. But if you look at another example, you can see that there is a difference in preference. Another type of very classical Chinese martial art Quan Fa throw is again something we covered previously when he's in a, in a side stance. Uh, you know, for, for example, the, the most classical one from Pi Gua is like this, right? You come here, you come here, and then you do this. So as you straighten up, you basically bump the person off balance. And a similar thing which you can basically see in the chain style interpretation of single word is that you know, they will come through here. I'm not saying this is how single word is, but you can basically see that uh, you know, they will show, demonstrate this. Another example of this is in Baji, where it's the same s -s -s setup, and it will come through here. And then there, right? It's like, like that. Or in the body's palm like this, the same thing. So you move the hand, will be here, and then there. And then from here, you yank the person out. So this is a very common thing in Chinese martial arts, in Quan Fa. And obviously, in today's world, this is called Shred, but originally, this would probably also be considered beer because you're not actually picking the guy up, you're not throwing him down, you're simply stepping over and bumping him off balance. And from here you can notice a trend that in Chinese martial arts, a lot of the times, right, you don't want to grab onto the person. With, with the exception of mantis, so mantis is a lot about grabbing the, the, the wrist and trying to co control different hands. But in majority of the other styles, right, you don't actually want to grab onto the guy, right? All these traditional uh, throw or defa that you find in almost all the old Chinese martial arts Quan Fa styles, I'm not grabbing anything, I'm striking here, I'm striking here, and then I'm getting off balance, but you see, I'm not holding on to anything. Same words, you know, in Baji, I'm not grabbing him and doing something, it's just here, and then, and that. Uh, same goes for, you know, if I were to be in Chen style Tai Chi, it would still be, you know, it's here, it's not grabbing onto him and, and pushing him or manipulating him, it's like that. So this is, again, shows you that the tendency or the preference of the original Chinese martial arts Quan Fa systems, they're, they're not very big on grabbing on, especially closing. Instead, they want to get something off balance with a move that is very similar to striking. Right? The only difference is, you know, I'm not actually striking him, I'm, I'm actually striking pausing, but this whole motion is more similar to a strike than to a wrestling throw. And if that fails, my hands are not occupied, so I will, I will continue with, with striking. For example, if I come here, and this thing doesn't show you more balance, it will be here, and then there. For example, and I'll, I'll go into the next attacking technique. So it doesn't de delay. But obviously, if I'm holding onto him and I do a throw and I miss, it's a lot harder to strike back. I mean, obviously, you can let go and strike back, but you know, it's a slight delay from holding onto something, let go and then striking to just largely doing the sail, strike back and strike again. So from here, you should be able to see that the original intention approach 
between Chinese Transfa Diefa and Shuifa versus Chinese Racing Shuifa or Shuijiao, right? They don't call it Shuifa. You can see that there is a difference in approach. So another example we can see is from uh, Chen Sao Taiji. So now I know that in Chen Sao Taiji there are a lot of debate on what you know each application is meant for. But I need to take one interpretation of you know here and, and there, right? Again, you know, I'm not saying this is how technique this thing is good or bad or how you should get into it, but let's just look at the technique itself. Ideally if it's either somebody punching you catch his arm or you're already in the position where you got the guy's arm. So you basically you are doing um, this pulling down motion and when you try to combat that, you, you go up. And when you do that, basically you stiff in and then here, and then you, you be pushing that way onto the ground. Like this here. And, and, and that. So this again, it will be considered a throw now. And maybe this can be a throw in the sense that you are kind of standing him down. But you know, uh, fundamental, and also you kind of are trapping his legs. But again, right, a few important differences. First of all, it's intended from a side stance. Kind of. I mean, you can do it from a, a more forward stance, but fundamentally, it's different from wrestling where a stance is usually more like this, right? This is still a kind of forward and back stance, which is a typical Chinese martial arts stance, not a, a shui jiao stance. Obviously, if you're like this, you know, I mean, you will have to manipulate the leg this way or that way, but you can't, you know, do it like a, like a sideways motion. So you can see already that this technique is intended against Chanfa people who have a stance like this. And secondly, even though I'm, I'm holding here, but this is just because this is part of the Chen style technique, right? It's Lu, right? Peng, Lu. It's like one of the, the key te te technique. But once it, it, it gets to the, to the throwing side, you can see that I'm not holding onto him, I'm not grabbing him. I'm just, I'm, it's almost like a strike that is then make him tripping over my, my leg while I'm doing a strike. And another example for you to see how throwing in Quan Fa is quite fundamentally different from throwing in Shui Jiao. Right, so when you compare Shui Fa from you know, Chinese martial arts, Quan Fa based styles and Shui Jiao, right, the Chinese wrestling, and I don't mean you know comparing the techniques that are completely different, I'm talking about comparing the the techniques that have very similar mechanic or the same mechanic. For example, as we were saying just now, right? In, in Shui Jiao, there's one where you hold the guy and you just throw him that, that way. Whereas in Mantis, there, there's one where he punches and you do this, that, and then you throw him that way. That's one example. Another one would be, um, you know, whereas just stand here, right? Whereas in, in wrestling, you just come up to a guy, grab him, and then trip him over that way. Compared to uh, in Baji, where the guy punches, and you wanna be here, and then do that. So compare these techniques that have almost the same mechanic, right? But if you look at the difference between them, you can see that the most important difference is that in wrestling, or Chinese Shui Jiao, they don't really account for the guy's arm. Right, I come up, I, I, I grab him, I don't really care what he's doing with his arm, I'm gonna grab him and I'm gonna shift him, and if the opportunity is right, I'm gonna throw him. Whereas the Chinese martial arts Quan Fa approach, they first account for the guy's arm, right, whether it is from, the, from this punch to that and that. See, both arms are accounted for before they go into the throw, or in the, the Baji variant where you do this, and then you come here and then you, you throw him. Um, so in all the Chinese martial arts Quan Fa based throws that are similar to Shui Jiao, the biggest difference is that they account for the arms. And the reason for that is that there are two. Firstly, obviously, if I just come up to a guy and I grab him, he's gonna punch me. Okay? If, and not, in Shui Jiao it's different because you're not allowed to punch. But if you were, you got to come up to a guy and, and grab him. The moment you do that, he's gonna punch you. Even in, you know, in UFC, right? Uh, MMA, modern MMA, where they can do striking and throwing, you see that they will still start off with throwing. Nobody come up and, and grab the guy. And usually, only when they reaches a fence is when the, the, the clinch, you know, um, underhook and all of that start to happen. They don't do that in the middle of the ring because whenever I try to grab someone, they stay back and, and, and punch or stay back and kick. There's always that uh, you know that chance where he will kite the person and strike. 
So that is the first reason why in Chinese martial arts you can grab somebody straight off, you have to deal with his hand. When I'm engaging, chances are he's throwing punches at, at me, which is why I have to, to handle these things before I can do a shrifa, a throwing method. Secondly, and more importantly, right, is because the moment you don't account for his hand, so let's say for some reason, I didn't account for his hand and I got him here. What I can do a throw, I don't know what he's doing with his hand. Well, in the ring or in the competition, that's perfectly okay. But in reality, if I meet somebody on the street or in whatever real life situation, the moment I'm, I'm doing this to him, he might pull out a dagger and stab me. Well, I'm, you know, and if I'm too close for a frontal stab, he can do it from the side. Or he, you know, or he can drag me down with him and then stab me. So the point is, when you're fighting somebody that you don't know, it's not in a competition, at least the Chinese traditional martial arts Chen Fa understanding is that you want to account for his hand. Anytime you are close to a guy without seeing his hand, he could be pulling out weapons to, 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 to kill you. Which is why, if you look at any of the Quan Fa system that favors close range fighting, right? So it's not even just throwing. Any stuff that comes close range, for example, Wing Chun, right? They come close range by contacting both hands. I want to come here and then try to trap him and then strike him. I don't come up and just strike him because then he could have put out a knife and stabbed me. Same with uh, Tai Chi, for example. I've said this in the past, right? You push and in Tai Chi, or in internal, internal style in general, there is a, 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 a general agreement that internal martial arts, or push hand in particular, is like a virgin. I can't let him touch me. You know, if, if he touches me, then it's considered you, you lost that match or that bout or whatever you, you were doing. So basically, from with this Yi Quan, Old Tai Chi, push hand, you can really see that because they want to effect contact through here. And this is the, the, you know, the range they're moving. And when I go closer, I don't just ignore this and go closer. I actually come closer by trying to control what, whatever arm he is. And the only time I want to make a move is when I try to find an opportunity to take his arm out of the way and then punch him. Or, you know, if I'm doing each one, I'll be here and there. And while I'm doing this, is I'm still uh, controlling his hand to some degree. That's very, very important in general for any Chinese traditional Quan Fa that comes into close range. Because this is the only way to account for his hand. Right? If I'm starting here, and then like, like the modern uh, push hand format, not the traditional push hand, but the modern competitive version of push hand, I could be doing this, and then I just come in and I start trying to throw him, which can work, but you know, if you, uh, in real life, he could have been, he could have pulled out a dagger and stab me while I'm trying to, 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 to do things to him because I'm not actually seeing what he's doing with his hand. So this is the, the two main reasons why in Chinese traditional martial arts, even when you're doing a throw similar to Shui Jiao, you don't grab somebody and throw him. You just start from dealing with his punches and then try to, to control both and then do a throw. And when you do a throw, you are still actually striking the person, right? Like he mentions in the case where he's here, there, the throw is actually an elbow to the face. So even if the throw doesn't work, um, you know, you still strike him and cause damage. Or like, you know. And another thing is obviously, should this strike fail, in some of the situations, you can immediately go back to another strike. Now, for example, He's doing a punch, and I'm trying to throw him th this way. If it doesn't work, from here I can still be in range for, for striking. But if I'm actually here, and if this doesn't work, um, you're kind of already too close to do effective striking, so it becomes a, a pure wrestling situation most of the time. So that's another small reason why in traditional martial arts, you, know, you kind of uh, stop the throw by controlling the hand and doing strikes. And even when the throw fails, you can still follow up with more strikes. So now after all this analysis, it should become quite clear that why I insist that Quan Fa and Shui Jiao are not really together. They are two separate systems. And again, this is not to say that Shui Jiao is, or Quan Fa, one is better than the other or one is more practical than the other. Right? This is, to, this is a purely 
cultural, historical, and social differentiation. It has nothing to do with the actual practice. Whatever you find more useful for the purpose you need them for, you should trend that. Right? Don't use this as a way to judge the practicality. This is not intended for that purpose at all. I hope you find this content interesting and enjoyed this video. If you do, please subscribe me on my YouTube channel and make sure you click on the bell icon so whenever I update new content, you'll get a notice right away. If you want to support me on Patreon, that'd be greatly appreciated. And as always, a big shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your support, especially through this pandemic. It's very much appreciated. And a special shout out to Federico Ramirez and Jeff Fried. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon family. I hope you enjoy your stay here and enjoy the exclusive content that I'm providing on a periodic basis. Should you have any questions for current content, suggestions for future content, always feel free to message me and I'll definitely get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for all your support. Lastly, I'd like to remind everyone we are still in pandemic. Uh, there are countries such as uh, India, which is actually getting another wave and countries like Turkey is going to be on lockdown again. So we are not done with this pandemic yet. So make sure that you get vaccinated if you can. And even if you do, and especially if you don't, still wear your mask and keep your social distance, right? Don't let off your guard until this pandemic is truly over. And stay safe and stay healthy. Keep safe out there. Thanks for watching Triassons Martial Channel and I'll see you next time.